How you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Very relaxed. Yes. <laughs> very relaxed. I know you don't necessarily live in New York, but um, it's a rainy day out here. The vibes is kind of funky. Does that affect your mood or anything today? Um, I don't know. I ain't, ain't I feel like it? my vibe is my vibe. All right. Usually the rain, I'm, the rain is just a part of it. This is a part of the cycle, right? Ah, I like that. So I like the environment feeds me my energy sometimes. But you you can yeah. put your energy out I, to the environment. I would prefer the sunlight, though. Yeah. I would prefer the sunlight and the warmth. Yeah, copy that. All right, well, we're going to break the ice straight up. Going back to literally his earliest memory with music. Um, Spence, what is the first song you remember hearing? Um, First song I remember, the that's that song, I'm Blue. I'm blue, I'm blue, I'm blue, I'm blue, I'm blue, I'm blue, I'm blue. Oh, yes, I remember that. Yeah. That's actually funny. <laughs> so when did you first realize your appreciation for music, though? Mm, probably probably uh, early on, like when I was three. Because mm -hmm. that's the first memory. The first memories I have is music involved. So like, you know, like when you have childhood memories. That, yeah, the like, first, yeah, that click. Just being in the car and then like my mom playing music and my siblings playing music and like just I would always be singing and mm -hmm. dancing and stuff like that like I remember that from being like a little infant so you and already bridged me into the next part of the conversation square one literally your earliest uh, memories um what are some of those songs she would listen to dropping you off at school um like? she would listen to a lot of like 80s music my mom would listen to 80s music like um it was a it's like a genre called like new wave okay and, like, freestyle music um and then like Michael Jackson. Of course. You know, and then um, I heard a lot of Earth, Wind & Fire. Um, but yeah, a lot of that dance freestyle music, like, um, what's that What's that song? And then even like that stuff, I think it's from the 80s, like the, um, what's that song that Diddy sampled for I Miss You? For oh, Missing you. Every Step. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God. Step That's the you, first baby, song that yeah. made me cry. Every what's the first? you made, that shit hard. What's the first song that made you cry? First song that made me cry. Yeah. Um <laughs> I don't know. Maybe How Do I Breathe? But, but this song didn't By make Mario? me cry. Mario? Yeah. Oh my God. Who was you crushing on? The song didn't make me cry though. It was just the situation. I know. Let's talk about the situation. Can you talk about the situation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a girl. This girl. How, what year was that though? That was a man. I don't know. I must have been in like sixth I, grade. I could see crying to that though. That's a good one. I, I might have shed one tear. I'm shedding gangster tears. Oh my God, no. All right. So how do I breathe? That's the first. I guess one, the first one you can recall. Um, but I'm asking you about these songs right here. All right. So do any of these songs mean anything to you or do you have any special memories of any of them? Fantasy by Mariah Carey, Gangsta's Paradise, Coolio, yeah. You Are Not Alone, MJ, yeah. Runaway, Janet Jackson, Waterfalls, TLC. Yeah, so well, Gangsta's Paradise, that's actually one of the first songs like when I was a kid that I remember just was stuck in my head because he was using that Stevie Wonder, uh, yeah. that Stevie Wonder melody. And then he was just saying Gangsta's Paradise. It was like that was stuck in my head for yeah. a minute. So I used to listen to that on the bus going to school. And then um, you are not alone. Yeah, my mom always sings that in the house. Do you the know that all up. those songs, one through five, are the top five songs on Billboard charts the week he was born? What? Yes, October and waterfalls. Too. No, waterfalls. Yes. Definitely, that's a staple everywhere, right? Like, yeah. But no, nah, definitely. Yeah, so, those are ingrained in my in my brain for exactly. sure. Exactly. So talking about ingraining music in your brain, because I think a lot of like our taste and sound kind of comes from those early. I guess those early memories and early influences, what was really fed to us back then. Yeah. If, you know, when you had your first Walkman, was it a, what'd you have first? Yeah, Don't I tell me it was the, the CD. You had a CD, good, okay. We're My not, brother gave it to me, the little CD player. Yeah, your first one? Yeah, what was your first CD? I know you had the CD pack, but what was like your first go-to CDs back then? Um, The Tupac, All Eyes On Me. Yeah. Um, The Lincoln Park, you heard of Lincoln Park? Yes, of course. Lincoln Park, uh, Hybrid Theory. I think, and then Meteor, I think, but Hybrid Theory for real. Yeah. Linkin Park, that's like an alternative rock, indie kind of rap to it vibe. They was fire. And then um, Get Rich or Die Trying. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Now that's, a lot of people, I think that's an underrated album. For real? I think it's underrated. I think that's like top five albums. I said it's underrated. As in know. like. I'm saying, but 
Well, at least I feel like everybody. I thought everybody knew. Like I thought that was a general thing. Like that's one of the best uh -uh. rap albums ever. I was talking to somebody one day, and I was like, uh, "In the club is like that's one of my favorite songs. I don't know yeah. why. It just is like." But it, every song on that album is crazy. Yeah, crazy. So at least we connect on that. So yeah, yeah to my friend that was saying, "Why would you want to hear that?" Yeah, they might be too young. Nah, he my nah. age. He my age. Damn. He my age. Um, I don't know. All right, so. Give us your dog trying, all that jazz. Tell me about, do you play video games? Did you play video games back then? Growing up, I did a little yeah, bit. Yeah, what'd I you play? Shoot. Um, well, I think the first video game I was playing was Pokemon. And then like Mario Kart. Yeah. And Super Mario World, Super Mario Bros on like the old Nintendo. Yeah. And then um, I think Halo, you remember Halo? I was I never liked uh, first Xbox. person shooter games. Yeah, I yeah. played San Andreas and Midnight Club. That's it. Yeah. And Need for Speed. Yeah, Halo. I played Halo and Call of Duty, and then um, like that was on the, like the Xbox and the um, yeah, Xbox Live, Xbox 360. And then recently, I don't have a video game system. I haven't had video games like in my house since like maybe like 2009, 2010. Oh, that's a long time ago. But if I go to my friend's house and they got the game, I'll, I'll hop on like GTA. Yeah, and start shooting yeah. People. When you was playing back then, when you had <laughs> video games in your house, what would you listen to? What'd you be listening to? Get Richard Dot trying? Uh, everything really. I'll just put shuffle, put it on shuffle because you might. It might be like, it might be like Buju Bantan. Okay. Then, and then it might go from there to like Donnell Jones, and then it might yeah. go to like Stevie. Okay. Bob Marley, but mostly vibed out stuff. And then yeah, if we're playing shooting shooting games, they yeah, are definitely like. Some pop, but I mean, I didn't really curate that. I would just just put because I got a playlist. It's just like a thousand f songs. Yeah, this is like all stuff I like. But when you you downloaded those songs from where? How'd you get those songs? Um, back then. Back then. Or at that point, I don't even know. It's, it's on the. It's just I'm just pulling stuff up on YouTube. Got you. Damn. Yeah, okay. YouTube. I remember I used to just pull up like the um. I remember I used to pull up like all the R&B stuff, so like Neo and like Akon. Remember that era, like Akon, oh, Neo, yeah. and like Mario. And I would just pull up like the lyric videos, and then it would just be playing. Yeah. And I would have all the tabs open. Well, let's talk about like all the influences around you that kind of introduced you to those sounds, right? Because mm -hmm. some of it, obviously, you have your own taste in music, and you are finding your own. But uh, from what I understand, there was your school is very diverse. Your high school or, was your middle school diverse too? Oh yeah, all of it. Ever since since preschool. That's a blessing, yeah. man, to have that much diversity in one place. Yeah, yeah, it, um, it definitely is. Definitely. So is. How how did those influences like help you discover more music and, and music that you found out that you love too? Yeah, so I mean, in our school, like we would always have um like school dances, kind of mm -hmm. dances, and like um even like even some school days, we they were just like. During lunch, they would like let us go to like the um or during recess, they would let us go to the gym and they would have, be playing music too. Damn, what kind of school is it? Yeah, my school, it our was school lit. system was lit. Yeah. Damn. But um, yeah, and then really my brother, really my brother put me on and my sister put me on a lot of the music that I listened to. Yeah. Um, like my brother was the first person who put me on the like Fifty Cent, and then my sister was the one who put me on the Lincoln Park, and then um yeah, just in the neighborhood too, just going outside like you know everybody just singing random songs but um yeah and I also grew up with a lot of Caribbeans too mm -hmm. so dance hall reggae all that stuff we were listening to it very early they gave you that name Shata. yeah yeah, yeah. They, that's that's how I got that name um and then Jersey Club yeah so at all the parties they playing all the stuff we had we would have R&B nights and um, of course, they playing hip hop, and then they would be playing dance hall too, and then Jersey Club was yeah. like the main thing though. And Everyone, what years were those we back then? For. Just before, because we're gonna touch on Jersey Club in a little bit, but that was like two thousand eight. Yeah, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, even really two thousand six too, because like mm -hmm. two thousand six we would listen to Baltimore Club, like K yeah, Swift, you right. and like yeah, Baltimore Club, K Swift, like even like Percolator and like yeah. hands up, thumbs down. I could never do those dances. I, I went to high school in Delaware yeah. for two years, so everybody was hands up, thumbs down. Represent it's time that, for yeah. Down. Represent that beat. I time. know yeah, what that, the what's going on, but um, that was in my muscle memory. It is dang. <laughs> All of those Can dances. You do it? Yeah, uh, I ain't gonna do it right now. <laughs> I, I, no, I'm not gonna make you do that. Look, I can't even do it. I ain't gonna make you do that. I'm gonna laugh at you. Um, but all right, so 
all of those influences obviously have helped shape a lot of how you play with your sound too like a lot of your, your genre bending i guess is a term but like i feel like you just play around with what you feel like what vibe you want to set in the time like on god i was saying to him earlier it feels like prophetic to me and a little bit more i said medicinal but more so like a song that i would listen to to really manifest something or bring myself out of where i was how i was feeling um and then um what was the other one arriba is like a little bit more like funky and like i guess i wouldn't call it reggaeton but um yeah the guitar is like more dance it's yeah, like dancing dan yeah. yeah it's like groovy the more groovy. groovy um but Baseline. when you were writing these songs or when, or when you write music or when you are putting your songs together do you decide all right i want this vibe or do you just start making the music and then it turns into the vibe yeah i just i freestyle and then i find a melody I'm giving a formula for all the people out there mm -hmm. who just start music. This is what unlocked me. So unlocked I'll, yeah, I'll just play the beat. I'll freestyle to it like two or three times, and then I will pick like the the my favorite melody out of all my takes, and then I will pick um, you know the, the 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 next most fire melodies and use those for the verses. Mm -hmm. And um, you know sometimes the lyrics will come out. Other times I'll just listen back to the melody, and then I'll just say a lyric. And the lyrics usually come from like. If I don't just say it off rip, it'll be just like, oh, what does this beat make me see in my head? And then just describe mm. that. Oh, I like what you just said. Because what we were talking about earlier, remember? About me and how I listen to it? Yeah, it paints pictures. I know. Head. I yeah. just like to see the pictures. But I don't know how to describe them. So maybe I should start trying to describe it. Describe them. it, yeah. You just write it down. Oh. Mm -hmm. You have synesthesia? What's that? Like when you listen to music, you see colors and, and no. pictures and stuff? No, oh. no, no, no. But I do feel like emotions. But I think everybody does that. But I don't yeah. see it. I just feel something that I can like paint a... I don't We'll talk about it later. We're talking about you. This is about you. Um. So you mentioned something earlier where you were saying that... um, Or just now when you were saying that how you write music or how you come about it, like you just kind of let it flow out, right? Mm -hmm. And then in an interview I was watching with you, you were talking about how every different form of art is a different form of expression. With music, literally I'm telling you exactly how I'm feeling and, and like you can hear the sounds and like they have the different emotions in them. But then with textures, with fabric, with, with fashion, with design, it's more abstract. Mm. And are there any parallels between your relationship with music and your relationship with fashion? And what yeah. are those? I approach it the same way. The same exact way. I just put the brush down, do something. Because if some, my friend uh, Dominique Mills, mm -hmm. that's who I started like painting on clothes with. He's yeah. the first one who was like, yo, paint on that junk. And he's from Philly. That's my boy. Um, but he was like, there's no mistakes like with art. There's no such thing as mistakes. If you do something you don't like it, just do something that you like right after that. And so I just I, like I just approach yeah I, I approach my shirts I approach my pants everything like everything I make is just like a song like you do something then you add on to it yeah. then you just keep adding on to it and then eventually like cause it's like you got to move though if you don't if you're not in motion then you're not gonna really understand like it's where you want to go it's yeah. not gonna flow out oh that's real you know what okay. I'm saying like put the put the brush down. If you don't like something, just do something you like right after. Yeah, just put something on the fabric and then whatever That's comes nice. cuz it's like it's the same thing with music like just whatever comes to your mind, just put it on the song. And so yeah. Don't when even you be are, when you're painting or designing or whatever you're doing with fabric or text, textures or textiles at the time, um what are you listening to or what are some moments, let me put it to you this way. What are some moments you really been like in hard in the paint, like grinding to get a design out mm -hmm. to get something out, and you just had something on repeat, or you just remember the music you were listening to at that time, and what was that? Um, so vividly, I could say like when I was like in 2013, I guess, and I was really like going hard, just every day making clothing. Um, I was listening to Buju Bantan album Till Shiloh. It's called Till Shiloh. I was mm -hmm. bumping that, and then I was bumping um, Me Against the World, that mm. album by Tupac, just back to back. I could probably get a lot of shit done to that. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was on my, that was like my Tupac era, like just, I was listening to just straight Tupac and then like reggae and dancehall back in that era, but that really had me in the bag. But really, I'm not picky though when it comes to music when I'm making clothes. I just, because I'm not even focused yeah. on the music. It's just background noise for real. Cause I'm just I'm just seeing like I just strictly turn to visual, 
I'm not I'm not really hearing what nobody's saying. People could be talking to me. I'm not gonna uh, like my ears I just pretty much go deaf like when I'm Interesting. I'm not even listening to what nobody's saying or like anything like that. I'm just locked in on that through the eyes and the hands. Because when you're playing it it's it's from a speaker or something in the room, right? Mm -hmm. All right, not yeah. necessarily. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't ever. I don't. I don't ever really listen to music in headphones. Oh my god, you should. Like, you know how I'm talking to you in headphones right now? Yeah. It feels a lot different than if we take these off, and I'm like, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I do when I'm making it. Like yeah, when I'm yeah. making it, but like, yeah, yeah. I do need to get some headphones. Get you some headphones. Holla at Bose. Get you some get headphones. headphones. Something Dre would do if I were you, I would. Um, and this is me trying to put myself in the fashion designer shoes. I, because of my connection with music. I would probably listen to music in my headphones or at least have the vibrations of music in my headphones yeah. then put that brush down or then you know what i mean because yeah, yeah, yeah. that that feeds me but maybe yeah. one day you make a playlist like and you're that. like no you know what i have done that yes i have done that because i was writing um i would listen to beats when i uh made some of my early work and um like I, you, you could you might be able to scroll in like my tag posts on instagram and see like i used to write my lyrics yeah on jackets and all stuff like before i even make the song so like mm -hmm. some people write on the pen in the past sometimes i would just write lyrics i'll be listening to beats and i would just be writing lyrics as beat yeah just writing on a um jacket and it would look hard or on a hoodie yeah and it would look dope so the music definitely yeah would, would jump start some of that stuff yeah now that i think about it so you was in your bag you was going hard you were painting because every you don't necessarily make your clothes in mass right they're literally one of, of one mm -hmm. of a kind um yeah. talk about kind of like your brink in fashion and like the i want to say the years 20 was it 15 maybe when was your first breakout in fashion fashion probably like 2012 2012, 2012? Yeah. okay 2012 so like um i made this like first t-shirt i made it was like a black t-shirt and i would take bleach and i would paint like a rib cage and like a skeleton like mm -hmm. on the shirt this was in like 20 yeah 2012 and um this is when instagram was new i just put a whole bunch of hashtags and then i just kept posting my stuff i would model it i would have my homies model it and um i would wear it every time i go to new york every time i go to a concert or a party or an event i or would go event, yeah yeah and then i would um just market it like that and then i sold out those shirts just people on the internet people who see me on the street they would buy it a lot of people still have those and then i would just keep dropping stuff um but that 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 like blueprint for me was like how I kept doing it because it was so cheap because I would just buy blanks mm -hmm. and then I would just paint on it or bleach stuff or like just do it by hand and it was just like that's how I would add my value just putting my own um just my own artistic yeah it's intake. your own energy I mean, on yeah, it my it's own your energy, energy literally it, yeah. everything about what you make is your energy so well yeah then yeah so I think that year then Tiana Taylor wore my more of my shirt to the yeah, club that's with, what I was with Iman Iman Shumpert wore it too before they was even together yeah and then um that's funny yeah I gave my shirts to a whole bunch of people I gonna give shirts to I used to just pull up on on like album signings and just give people my shirts tell them like I'm next up I'm creative I'm this that and like I done met so many people who I ran into again like I don't I remember chasing down Virgil down like to every party just like yo mm -hmm. y'all got some shirts yo like, now you working with them and then right. just giving him just giving him and like i remember running down on like big sean at like an album signing and then push a t and mm -hmm. T tiana taylor tiana taylor was like the only one who like put it on though the same day mm -hmm. went to went to the club she wore it that night right yep, yeah yeah she wore it that same night so you know that was dope that, that that's what i feel like i remember me, those images because no one was wearing it like that yeah, then. it was it was doing something on Tumblr, I think. Too. Yes, I was a Tumblr girl for sure. Yeah, it was on Tumblr because yeah. I, I, I just remember like we would be accidentally going viral on Tumblr too. Just we were just on the street, just dressing. You know, yeah. we was like we was into dressing, but making our own stuff. And back then, we had to get really creative with how we dressed because we didn't have thousands of dollars to spend on outfits and stuff like that. We was just like going to thrift stores and then buying stuff repurposing it mm -hmm. St like i would stitch up i would tailor some of my clothes myself on the sewing machine or i would like if i seen something that i liked but i wanted to cut something out and then sew something back on or paint over it i would do that and then it was like a diy era do it yourself DIY so. era. it sure was back before youtube tutorials became a thing mm -hmm. yeah we were just doing stuff and then yeah photographers would be catching us on the street fashion week fashion night out stuff like that and then we would just be going viral by accident mm -hmm. so 
I guess that's how a lot of people recognize me um, from just being fresh. Mm -hmm. I always been always been into clothes and like dressing, so that's just something that I had a natural like aptitude for. Mm -hmm. And then I guess people started recognizing that. But um, yeah, that's what that was. So bridging the gap between um, you being in your back with the fashion and and that taking off, and you kind of being in the right spot at the right time in culture, really with Instagram, with Tumblr, and leveraging all of that into the ecosystem or the. Uh, I guess e-commerce or whatever that you have now. Um, when did music become the pivotal shift of how of your vessel of, of art? Yeah, so like 2012, um, one of my one of my homies, he got uh, murdered in the town, and he was like the first local artist that we looked up to. That I looked up to him and his his best friend Stephen Gaines, um, Beef Stoner Steve. Him it was him and then my boy Chino. They was best friends, and then um, they would always be just in the lab every day. I was like in fifth grade, sixth grade, going to their house, just hanging out, looking at all the Jordans they got, and looking at like stuff they they clothes and G Shocks and stuff like that. And they would always be recording in the room. Mm -hmm. And um, Chino was like the first like Asian rapper that I looked at, and was like, "Yo, he got sauce!" Like mm -hmm. having all his own clothes, his own money. Yeah. You know, selling what he got to sell and then making fire songs. Because back then it was like so much about battle rap, but yeah, he was making songs like yeah. hooks. How he tough was the hook were, man. Yeah. yeah, he was the hook man. He was the, the hook man. I like that. He was making verses. Him, they had the collective E4P. All mm -hmm. those guys I looked up to um, coming up. And then uh, once he he got murdered in 2012, and then that was like damn. And I was. I was dabbling in music like in high school. Okay. I would I would write raps and like um make little little songs here and there but once once that happened in 2012 that's what like like damn I got a message cuz I thought he was going to be the one to like represent for the Asians. Mm -hmm. Especially him coming from the town like he really from the culture like he's a He's, he's one here of Italian, the, talking about Franklin, right? Yeah, Franklin. Yeah. He's one of the pillars of Franklin. Like, everybody knows Chino uh... like when you think of Asian people Right when you're in Franklin, you growing up in Franklin, you think of Asians, you think of Chino, then you think of me, right? And then, um, so that's what that was, and then that it just inspired me. It was like, damn, like he had a real message, and like he did something know, for me. Yeah, he did some, and it was like I just got to continue that. Yeah. And like in my first project, I spoke about it a lot too. Um, I speak about it in, in, in every in every project really, because that's like my that was the person I looked at. Like, damn, he's fly. Yeah. He get he he having his own. Just yeah. having his own stuff, and um, you know that's what made me just start diving deeper into like writing because I was kind of like it kind of messed me up because mm -hmm. like it was during a time where I wasn't really where I was going up with my clothes and I was writing more music and just plotting on it, but then once that happened, it was like damn, like the whole school was just silent mm -hmm. when it happened. Like it was just like the whole day nobody was talking. And it was just like I just remember like being at my locker, like like opening opening up my locker and seeing the shoes that he had um, traded me, and I was like, damn, like I gotta I gotta make a difference in the world, like because I thought he was gonna do. It. I was always like, you the one, I, yeah. I was like, I was always the person like, oh, I'm gonna just be in the background, like I got ideas and stuff, but I can't be no rapper. I'm not no Asian rapper. I can't be no artist. And uh, like I'll write a hook for you though, or I'll write this that, but. I wasn't ever confident, but seeing his confidence and then the next day is gone, like he's just Ooh. up there. That just made me like, damn, I gotta, I gotta come out my shell and just really like put on for the culture and just put on for like, you know, everything that he stood for. And then, you know, eventually that that helped me just become a man because it just it 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 made me start taking life more serious, like not just floating around and just really being intentional. And yeah. then everything just started manifesting for me then, because um, you know, right after that it was just the clothes started going up. Mm -hmm. I, I went to New York for school, and you know, I started making a name for myself. And you know, I always just you know pay homage yeah. to my boy. That's but yeah, and so like like I said, him and his best friend, it was it was it was Chino and Stoner Steve, and the Stoner Steve little brother is seven three two cash. Mm -hmm. And then after yeah, Chino is, is me. And then that's the first song from the town that got a million views. Uh, is me, is the little brothers, me and 
732 Cash made a song called Dirty Jersey. Yeah. And that was the first like moment where I was like, yo, I can actually make waves with this music. Cause that was just an all organic vibe. Like uh -huh. recorded it in the basement, no studio session, no mixing engineer. We, we just put it out, Yeah, shot a video in the town, all our own cars, our own clothes, no props, no nothing, no budget, just natural vibes. And then, um, you know, it kind of gave us a platform to, to release our, our, um, music and our art mm -hmm. and and to carry that carry the wave and carry that confidence into the next generation or Facts. into your sound and you never y'all like we never know what we're doing for other people right mm -hmm. and what you even saying right now could touch i mean you already said a couple things to me that has touched me and unlocked something in my mind with music but um i think it's really important that as you are ascending you continue to make sure you're paying homage to those that have unlocked parts of you to get to mm -hmm. where you are right yeah. now but speaking on ascending and unlocking, I want to touch about, I guess, what I identify as a milestone for you or a brink for you just because of my what I'm receiving from you on God, the, the track on God. Um, again, it, it feels really prophetic to me and it feels like a very vulnerable moment where you are speaking straight directly from, you know, that conscious that you have inside of you. Um, talk to me a little bit about not why you wrote the song. That's I would never ask that, but like about how. How how that message how those messages came out of you? There we go. Back then in 2010, we were saying whatever, cursing people out, hopping out of cars, like just on timing, and I that stuff like it has a boomerang effect. Like stuff started happening to me, and like you know things that you say come back to you. And then I'm like, I didn't realize that until like recent, like not recent, but. A few years ago when I started, I started a whole lifestyle change, like started learning more about myself and my insecurities and my, my, my weaknesses or my lesser strengths and just like my ego. Mm -hmm. And I just started learning like, yo, the things that you say become the things that you do and the things that you do become the things that come, that are they, done they to you. To you. Mm, so like, and then even the thoughts, right? Those thoughts manifest into words. But um, I was just like, man, I need to, I need to make sure that everything I say on record, like on wax, because this stuff lives forever. Like I gotta make sure it's from yeah, the heart, and power. I mean it, and I mean it. Because once I started like releasing music, I noticed kids start coming up to me, like spitting my lyrics back at me, and I'm like, damn, I said that. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> all right, you, you, let me make sure. Saying? Just no, crazy, no, no, like no. this, my get y'all on, like yeah. stuff like that, and I'm like, damn. I feel you. I'm like, that's hard, but okay, I got to grow. I got to keep growing. Yeah. So, like, um, it's all about, like, positive affirmations and, like, speaking positive and speaking life onto yourself and mm -hmm. onto others. And that stuff is, like, you get rewarded for that. You know what I mean? And, like, also, like, like I'm super, like, into, like, I'm not even going to say into. Like, I live and breathe, like, reggae, reggae music and, mm -hmm. like, um, and, like, I could I could even go to far as far as say like a lot of my practices and like my spirituality it derives from Rastafari. Like I'm super Let's like, talk about it. Like and you know, when it comes to that, it's like you can't say no ne nothing, no death, negative. no bad yeah. energy. You gotta All say life. what you say what's real and then you promote life, right? Even down to like what I eat. Like I had to change my diet and everything because I went through like a health a health scare. Like I was eating so bad, I was I was kind of like on the verge of depression. Like this was like after my first project, I was just like, hmm. I was in a dark place. And then um, I started having like skin problems and started having like digestive issues because I was just eating whatever, eating whatever, smoking backwards all the time, just Ooh. drinking alcohol, just McDonald's not taking fries. care of it. Yeah, not taking care of my, yeah, I was eating everything. Cause we, we used to be able to do that in yeah. high school cause we was athletes, but then, you know, you stop playing sports and then that stuff just start like building up, messing you up internally. And mm -hmm. I was just like, damn, like, why is this happening? And then, you know, my appendix bursted. I was mm. in the hospital. I got like, I, I, I lost like 20 pounds. I couldn't walk. I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't do nothing. I was just sitting there, me and myself and God. And then I was like, all right, I gotta like, I gotta figure this out. Did you listen to music? 
Yeah. Okay, a lot of gospel to, music. I, yeah. I, was, I, I couldn't wait to ask you about gospel. Music. Thank a you. lot of gospel music, reggae music, um, soul. Just gospel in itself, too. Yeah, just... Yeah, it's all gospel. Everything is the I, gospel to me, unless yeah. it's like unless it's like going against God. You know, a lot of stuff does go against God. But anyway, yeah, I just you know, and then it happened again. My my like I had a complication after that, like a few years later. Um, so when they when they went in and removed my appendix, they uh, dropped like something in there in my oh, abdominal did you cavity. Get money for that? I don't know, man, because it was kind of my fault for not getting a follow up. I was just living so fast. I didn't get a follow up thing. Yeah. I didn't get no X ray and stuff. Like that. But then it happened again. That's was twenty twenty one, and so I remember I was messed up again, messed up, just skeletor in, in the, the pandemic. Face. In the pandemic too, right? That was yeah, yeah. Skeletor in the face, just like super bony, just Golly. just messed up again. And then um, you know, I was just recovering in my in my um apartment, and then my uh my uh, brother Mel. Uh, he also produced on this album, mm -hmm. but he was just sitting there. He pulled up on me. He visited me, and we were just sitting on the couch. And I was just going through beats because you know the music don't stop. So I was going through <laughs> beats, and I'm just like, it don't listening to the, listening to the beat, the beat racks, beat, and just like, oh God, oh God, and then yeah. and I, we just freestyle. And then Mel was like, yo, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, record that. And I'm like, for real? Okay, bet. So that became a song, and then I was just like, "Yo, I'm saying on God." Everybody say on God, but how many people really like putting it on God? And I'm just like, "All right, exactly." I'm gonna just say everything I feel and say everything I mean, because you know, all that stuff, all that stuff is facts, you know. Yeah. To me, all that stuff is facts to me that I say in that song, and that's how that song came about, you know. And and it's like moments, just moments like that. It was like when I was down. And I'm saying, on God, this and that, on God, I'm living a legend. People be like, oh, I'm a living legend. Mm -hmm. But nah, I noticed I like, that too. On God, I'm that. living a legend. Like, I'm living it right now. So you are a legend already. No, 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 no. But, I'm not the legend. Wait, explain what that means. It's like, I'm living a legend. Because a legend is like a tale, right? Like, yeah. A legend is like a, a crazy story. Yeah. I'm not the legend, I'm, I'm a human. I am the one living the legend. Like That's I'm living that. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm living the legend, not not like I'm a living legend. I'm just like, no. Nah, I'm living a legend. Like it's actually happening right now. I'm not I'm not the story. I'm just yeah. living it. You That's know what that saying? ego work that you did that's taking you out of uh maybe you've always thought like that, but like yeah. You send that to me. I'm like, dang. You know, that's real. I should. I'm the human being. I'm the obviously the yeah. instrument. Well, in I'm this, the soul in the human vessel. That, that if we yes, want to get spiritual, and, yeah. you know, we get can. We can take gland, it there. If you want to get get down to that level, but yeah, like, I'm just I'm just experiencing it. I'm living a legend on God, and it's, and it's like, the way I look at it is when I say on God, it's like, it's like you just imagine God's hands and yeah. you're standing on it, and He's just carrying you putting you places, carrying you over troubled water, you know what I'm saying, lifting you up out of oh places. God. That's how that's that's how I see it in my mind. Like I love God. when that. I say on God, like you everything like I'm this. standing on God. Yeah, like everything is dependent on God. Damn. You saying some <laughs> yeah, I, mean. I like this is good. This, I like this analogy. If I think about myself on God, like okay, if he if he got me, I gotta live live for him, right? Like mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because if I'm living for him, the gap going, he gonna whoop drop oh, ass. Oops. I mean, he never really <laughs> nah, dropped us, but that. you know what I mean. But the chosen, he ain't gonna see. Him, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All of us are chosen. Damn, I was um, maybe forget what I was getting ready to say after that. He or she, I don't know. Yes, yes, he you're right. She, they, them, God, God, on God, yeah, that on God. Um, you. So I want to talk about your spiritual journey too, though, because you were saying, all right, your health issues, the health scare, and all that stuff. Were at, was there a point where you like literally said, all right, I'm buying the books, I'm watching the YouTube videos, I'm mm -hmm. doing the juicing tutorials. Yeah, shout out my brother La Way, Wale, La Way. That's my partner. He, yeah. I grew up with him. Um, he was the first one who was on like the Doctor Sabi. Alkaline, electric, um, live it. We don't call it a diet because you don't want to die from it. You want to live from it. It's not oh, because die, die it. is in it. Yeah, live it. So alkaline, live it. And he was the first one who was like, yo, stop, start replacing these foods with this food. I'm like, man, get out of here, that vegan. 
Did you do it slowly or slowly? What? Okay, because it's, it's replacing. It's not. It's not um, removing. Because you remove too much, you're gonna be star Your starving. Gonna be shocked, yeah. You gotta replace. Adding more vegetables. Adding more fruits. Right, figuring out which ones work for your body and which ones like you like taste wise, and then it's all about the seasoning as well. So I learned how to cook my own meals. Like uh -huh. I, I just cook my own food now. I barely go out to eat, and then um, yeah, I, I just started getting healthy like that, and then I started running again, started working out, um, started stretching more, doing all that stuff, just increasing my health and my my spiritual, physical, mental, mm -hmm. increasing my stamina, just all the way, just tapping in that way and Wale La Way, he was the first one who was like putting me on to that stuff and like when I was going through a lot of stuff health wise he was helping me he was right there with me figuring it out with me because he had the resources and like mm. which um you know like, like right there. who to tap into like Dr. Sabi we, we watching his lectures and we watching like Dick Gregory and we watching like um even like Eastern Medicine and comparing the Eastern Medicine to like the um, traditional like Ayurvedic stuff and then mm -hmm. the Dr. Sebi stuff and we just, you know what I'm saying, mixing and matching them and seeing which herbs and which stuff to use. And that, that helped me get on my feet for real. Around, not around the time, but how much, what, how much time passed between that, all right, look, we gotta bring the books out, we gotta start studying this, until you really felt strong in that new lifestyle of yours? Oh, shoot, like, Two, one year, one year, two, one or two years, because you okay. know you start off it's a little rough because you okay. kind of because food is a drug. Hell yeah, I'm a I'm addicted Processed to sugar. Food, yeah. I'm a real. We're sugar. all addicted to something, whether, whether whatever it is, but like sugar and salt are the most like mm -hmm. prevalent ones in 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 society, right? Like everything got added sugar, everything got um salt, stuff like that, but um. It took a while because I was like, man, you're trying to find all these vegan alternatives like vegan meat and burgers and stuff. But it's like, you can't think like that. You got to think about like what the food actually is. Like, man, if you want a burger, go eat a cow. If you want vegan fish, why are you eating vegan fish? Stop. You got to let go of the concept of fish and let go of the concept mm. of of um of chicken and let go of the concept of fry of a burger. I don't know about that. Not you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. For me, I was Bye. talking to talking to myself. Like, yeah, I gotta yeah. let go of that concept. No, that's and that just could be and just realize like, yo, the body needs certain vitamins, minerals, right? Certain macros, right? Yeah. Certain things, and where do you get that from? And all of that stuff comes from the earth, in fruits oh, and vegetable God. form, and even like. Even like different type of um, yeah, different type of things. So in that span of time, right? Like obviously you have like you know what you've been the music that has influenced you has been carried with you all the way up to you know that point where you started transitioning a little bit more spiritually. Was there new music that was introduced to you that you discovered through kind of your development through this neck this new spiritual phase of yours, or back then? Um, like did anything new come to you? Was there any new like any expansion of your taste in music that happened as you enlightened yourself? I think no. Nah, I just felt music deeper though. Okay, I, I can see that. I felt music deeper. Like I uh, kind of understood it more. Yeah. Um. Cause my my taste in music always been crazy. Like I like even when I was, it used to be crazier. Cause back when I was a kid, I used to listen to like metal too. Mm hmm. Like metal and like super like hardcore rock too and then like super gangster music like super new york like i would just download freestyles from like i would download jada kiss freestyles and like put yeah. them and like have the mp3 on my um on my first generation ipod and just yeah. like getting it off a of line wire and then like Hi. Just like, Good but it, but but I'm saying, you, I might have like Panic at the Disco. I might have like Disturbed and Kirk Franklin, and then Kirk Franklin, yeah, that <laughs> yep. Kirk Franklin, John, John P. Key, and like yeah, Reverend James Cleveland, and then just Capleton, Mavado. But it's all over the place, yeah. And then even like, um, just yeah, all type of music. I because I just I love music. Like that's like you said, it's medicine. The music is medicine. Music is like it's food too. It's just like it's nourishment. And encouragement yeah nourishment and encouragement um but so, before we get into the next portion of the show i kind of want to like not play a game but i want to set a little scene and i want you to respond to my prompt or my question <laughs> with 
the name of a song and it is very important that as soon as i ask you a question what comes to your mind first is what you say okay. and then you can talk about it we can we can mold it from there but right. for this you gotta sit like sit like this with your with your palms up eyes closed and just I'm, listen to me all, all right. right you know we are in <laughs> where are we at we're in cali we're on the beach we in Malibu. We in Malibu. The waves is crashing on them sexy rocks. You may got a shorty with you or it may just be you. We got like a white linen two-piece suit on. It might be sunset a little bit. Perfect weather, right? And you just sitting on the beach, maybe with, obviously with a towel or something on you, I mean, underneath you, but what are you listening to as you watch the waves come at you and then retract back to the ocean? Uh Closer to my dreams. Oh, you know that song. You so good at this. You you good at my show. I like you know this. That song? Y- yes. How it go? But I go out, go 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 go. Uh, go uh, uh, how it go? Closer to my... Don't yeah, make me sing hey, on myself. That's it. <laughs> I love that. Oh my god! Now I have to go experience that moment right now. I like that. I mean, yeah. I can't get up and go to the beach right now. I like that. Okay, so I like this that game. It, it didn't take for you to answer that question. I like this game. You like that game? All right, I'm gonna I'm bring another setting back, but I wanna get to another topic first. Now that you're in your feels a little bit, you like it? See that, the positioning? When your palms are up, I like yoga a lot. So like in Shavasana is where I feel the most vulnerable, with my heart up to the sky, both my palms up to the sky. I'm melt, like if you can melt into that seat, melt into that seat. But just like let yourself feel that and think about the music that comes to you in those moments whenever I have, you know, I prompt you. Um, I would have did more, but we has, we've had such a great conversation. I kind of kept skipping over them, but this was a perfect transition, okay? So now I want to talk about current culture of Well, music. I thought we doing another scene. It's gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it back <laughs> after after this one. So I got to keep my eyes on closed? No, you can oh. open your eyes now. Oh, my God, yes. I should have said <laughs> I should have said that. No, in between each segment, I want to do a scene to get you in your feels and just kind of reset. No, that's, a, that's tough. Thank you, time. thank you. But we have been talking, chopping it up. You low key been putting me on so much. I forgot to give you the scene, so that was the first one. Okay, bet. Um, we'll get into another one after we talk about like the current culture of music and your point of views on some things. So, being that you from Dirty Jersey, 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 um, how do you feel about the new wave of Jersey Club and what it's done for the? I mean, the state of Jersey in general, but. What it's doing in in hip hop and uh, popular music it. right now? I love it because we came up we came up like little kids, twelve, thirteen, going to the uh, teen parties and stuff, and that's all we wanted to hear. Jersey mm-hmm. Club, DJ Slink, DJ Wala, DJ Tamil, uh, DJ J Hood. Shout out my guys, man, for real. OG pioneers of that of that you know of that Jersey Club. Because mm-hmm. um, back then we was getting we was trying to dance with girls. That's all we wanted to do. We wanted to get on some cheeks. We weren't mm-hmm. trying to like battle nobody. We weren't trying to like. I mean, sometimes we would we would get in a line and we all do the same dance. But yeah. like that battling stuff was new. It came about like more like 2010, 2009, 2010. But like, I came up from that era of like Jersey Club and just to see just to see people dancing again mm-hmm. to music is like great. And for Jersey to have his moment now is great too. Like shout out to MC Vert. Yes, um, MC Vert. You know he from Jersey. Um, he did that song with Lil Uzi. Yep, I just and um, that's authentic. Like that's authentic. You know he a real Jersey club DJ. He got the wave right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really appreciate that stuff. Like all those dances, like ingrained in my muscle memory. Like I, I, I was in dance class too. Like in middle school and like you didn't my freshman did so year. much, honey. You play instruments too, right? I played the trumpet yeah, when I was younger. Okay, because we didn't touch. I on sucked that. though at the trumpet. I hated the trumpet. Why? Cause my my lips would get chapped, cause it would be cold outside, and like I would have to oh. put all this Vaseline on. And I was like, man, I played the flute, and I had a similar issue. With I didn't like that. I was like, I was man, I should have played the keys instead. It's okay. Yeah. And you can still learn. What do you mean you can you can still learn? I'm all right. I can. I mean, I could. I could. I could. I produce yeah. stuff too. Like I could. I could you find chords. You got an ear on you. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I hear it with my third ear. Yeah, third ear. We got a third eye, but we also have a third ear, y'all. You gotta listen to my music with your third ear. Uh, I like that. (laughs) You gotta listen to his music with your third ear. Um, But wait, wait, we were talking about Jersey Club. All right, no, you just Jersey Club. Yeah, you shout out a lot. Like one thing I will say is this: the new generations of ears that are coming in and are now being introduced to the Uzi and the MC Vert, whatever. Like I want them to understand what came before that. Yeah. And that's Baltimore why Club. Baltimore Club. And so we had touched on that earlier. Philly so Club. Back Baltimore in Club. what year you said you were listening primarily to like the hands? Oh six, oh seven. Yeah. 
K Swift, I rest in peace. Ooh. Um, yeah. It's time for the percolator. That yeah. too. I don't know where that's from. That's old. I don't know. But we what was doing they... a we were doing a percolator. <laughs> yeah, and then you can't Wu Tang better than me. You can't Wu Tang better than that me. That means to start fighting. Better than better than better better than me. Yeah, that's and then uh hands up, thumbs down, represent that B time, represent that and then uh yeah, told it, like all that stuff. But yeah, and then we used to do like footwork, SpongeBob. Yo, the SpongeBob, yeah. yo, oh my god. Yeah, SpongeBob, Wu Tang, and um I don't know why they call it the Wu Tang. That shit is funny. I don't well, see, yeah, like, you about to do it. Yeah, I'm trying to see. No, you. what's crazy is back in um I forgot where I was or what part what you know, I live in a lot of different states. We talked about this, what part of life I was in at this point. But I was like, I lost a bet or something, and I had to do the SpongeBob. It was so bad. There's a video of it somewhere, and I swear, I hope that never gets surfaced. Um, I, I I bet that people got videos of me looking crazy. Looking there's crazy. There's a video of me. There's a video of me on uh, YouTube uh, when I was grinding on some chick at a, at one of them parties I'm talking mm -hmm. about, and I was so little. I was like five two. Oh my god, you tall yeah. as hell now? Yeah, it was before I hit my growth spurt. I was like yeah. five two. Had a BlackBerry. Clip to my cargo yeah. shorts. At least you had a Blackberry. Kid then. robot shirt. Everybody had a black. We had BBM. I didn't have any. What? How old were you? At? Like, now you was older. You was older. I didn't get a phone. I got the chocolate phone from the store. You like? I didn't video. get that one. I didn't get that until but the Blackberry was my first cool phone. But what age were you? I was in eighth grade. Oh yeah, I didn't get a phone until no, I was like no. sixteen. I was. You had the socks back then, grade. huh? Ben had it. The Ben had it. He, ben even, had he didn't it. even hesitate, y'all. That's confidence right there. He yeah, did not ben even hesitate. It. Okay, so Jersey Club, coming from Baltimore Club, et cetera, et cetera. Um, do you see yourself playing with that sound more in the future? Yeah, I, I mean, me and Slink did one already. Yeah. Uh, he did the Ariba remix, but I got some original like stuff that I've been working on with my DJ Marjess, yeah. who I grew up with. Yeah, you can go on my page. We was, we was in Jakarta dancing the Jersey Club on stage at the festival. But yeah, I got some club coming out with him. Um, yeah, we just having fun with it. But man, that club stuff is like in our blood. Like mm -hmm. it's new, and everybody's new to it and enjoying it. But it's so, in your blood. I mean, I'm not not, not no purist oh. type of vibe, but just My like bad. everybody's enjoying it and is 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 seeing it. But like, you know, the OGs. Like we gotta we gotta remember just to respect like the OGs, like yep. Slink and J Hood and Wala and Tamil and. You know, all those people, people who um, kind of like pioneered the sound in Jersey. Cause, you know, I just mm -hmm. wish that um, people now could see like the dances we was doing back then mm -hmm. and how to like they preceded these. And then like. Someone should do a TikTok on that. Sure, I guess I'll do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm about to say, you, I'm looking at you. Do it. Bring it. Like, yeah, let us know. I'll just gather good. up some of my homies. And some of your old videos. Yeah. You did. <laughs> I can't, I can't dance, man. It's I can, like but I. Like Jersey Club is like the only type of dancing. I mean, I can pop, I can pop and lock a little bit, but that's funny. I used yeah. to really think, I used to think I would be a dancer. I wanted to be a Jabberwocky. I'm dead. Yeah. I wanted to be a Jabberwocky. It was hard though. It was. It was hard. It's still I'm hard like, to this yeah. day. One of my homies is a Jabberwocky now too. It's fire. Oh, there's more now. They recruited yeah. more. Yeah, they. I think they got residencies and stuff. What? Places. Like, Where can I see them? I don't know. That's okay. a, that's a good question because I want to see them. Yeah, that, that's they was crazy. going crazy. Jabberwockies was going crazy, but yeah, man, they was putting on. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, like I just, I just hope that you know, with this Jersey Club wave and just the dance wave, just like the music just brings people dancing with each other again. With each other, because you know, we was just talking about me and me and Ops was just talking about like back then, right? Mm -hmm. When we was growing up, if you at a party and you ain't dancing with a chick, you lame. Mm -hmm. If if hit it to the beat, come on and hit then, it to the beat. Hit yeah, it to the beat. and then they say if everybody like find a girl, grab her by the hand, turn her around, and just hit it to the beat. Hit, hit it to, to the, the beat. beat. Like hit if beat. if yeah. you if before that part drop, we scrambling to find a girl. And if you don't find a girl, it's like musical chairs. Yeah, I'm having flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> you scrambling to find a girl, and if you don't find one, you lame. Right? Yeah. People look at like you gonna feel like In people look at you like you lame. Parties. But nowadays, if we go to a party in the club. And you try to go grab a girl and dance with her, or she gonna look at you like, what the? F and then even if you are dancing with her, yeah, you the only y'all the only one grinding. Like, ah, look at him, he lame. Y'all lame, now, yeah, now that's horny like, ass dude. I mean, like yeah. <laughs> they're looking at you like you're lame. But I'm like, <laughs> so it's just it's just reverse now. I'm like, I'm like, man, I just hope that one day, 
you know, you know, once we get over the corona and the, the social distancing era, that we can come back together and and males and females or however you rock, yeah, but you know, rock dance with each other. Cause in in Miami at the Caribbean parties, like we dancing with each Cause other. Cause you live in Miami, right? Yeah, yeah, like it's not taboo to grind over there. That and, culture like, is Afrobeats, that. Could, like, that's a different culture, though. I think that. But I'm saying Jersey Club was like that back then. Uh, yeah, Jersey. Yeah, it was straight it was hopping still here. on cheeks. Who yeah. can break who? Oh, she broke you. You got your homies holding up your back because the beat is going. Doo, 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 mm -hmm. doo, 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 mm -hmm. doo, doo, and it's like. She, they throwing it back hard, like literally trying to break Who you. This no, no, I'm like, I'm putting my hands in the air. I'm like, oh, okay. they throwing it back, and then you, and then you trying to dagger too, and then see who break who. But unless it was some slow, some slow yeah, stuff, yeah, then you yeah, just rocking. Yeah. But like, like you got your homies holding you up so you don't fall. Like that was a fun era. That's what, yeah, an experience at Jersey yeah. Club music is what I think is yeah. not really being seen as much as it. Should be or could yeah, be, the but parties was lit. I don't know. I haven't been to a party where it was like really like that anymore. Where girls now they were throwing it back. Now they're just yeah. Now they now they slapping I mean, but, their hips. And, but I will say like that's that's it's cool. Though. It's making people dance. Maybe because that stuff. The new Jabberwockies could be the new. You know what I mean? They hard. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'd rather see like all that choreography stuff. It's cool, but like I like Jersey Club. Like that's just the dancing yeah. that I'm used to. Yeah. And like I, that look fire to me. And like yeah. even dance hall. Like I don't know if you've seen like dudes who be doing like they choreography mm -hmm. the dance hall and stuff and I Afro love beats. Jamaica. I go all the time. Yeah, Jamaica's lit. Mm -hmm. Afro beats too. Like all that dancing. That like we just need more dancing in, in music. And um, but yeah, I just hope that people can start dancing more and uh they start they start becoming less taboo to dance with a girl again <laughs> we gonna see because these memes is crazy out here and, yeah you know the, the culture I, is there changed, are yeah. like it'd be like you know what i'm gonna put it to you this way from a female perspective um or a women's perspective um i like i think back then you could leave a party and like you may have exchanged numbers with a dude but you might not have right yeah but like there was no way for him to contact you afterwards he couldn't come harass yeah, you in your dms yeah, yeah, yeah. he couldn't send you a picture of his yep. it could it, it didn't have to be no weird it didn't have to be like a, oh now you owe me something or no I, now i gotta go home with you it was more like i go to this place to party to to get it off and to yeah. you know have fun yeah. and then i go home and, and i eat my muffins and go to sleep i don't know why i said muffins but it's nah, just you know what i mean like but we now it's like though, if i dance with a guy the probability of him now yeah, thinking him that you. him him and him on me or even just touching me inappropriately yeah. and it yeah. not being in the spirit of that dance then and then opening up yeah. my dms and then oh god Picking their word, blah, blah, blah. Like, God damn, yeah, leave it there. It's like, um, but I feel like, I feel like, I feel like when I be in Jamaica, it don't, you know, because I feel like it's just, it depends on the culture. Yes. It's just our culture right now, like in America, it's like, it's so like, oh, you might get hit with that rape charge. You might get hit with that. And dudes do be creepy now. Yeah. They be way creepier. It's the, I think it's the, the audacity internet. of the, ac yeah, the dudes access. Yeah, they be creepier. So I understand that. Like, I don't, like, that's why I don't. I'm not. I'm not going up to nobody and trying to get yeah. nobody to dance with me. I'm not doing that. You don't. You don't miss it though. You miss it though, don't you? Yeah, I miss being a kid again when it wasn't so serious. Yeah. But like you said, it wasn't like it wasn't so easy to stalk a girl, and it wasn't like you no know, people weren't thinking so perverted. Because back then it was like we just dancing, right? Like maybe like the the um the faculty and staff and the chaperones like what what are they doing? Yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. The people who but aren't hip to the like, culture, but yeah. like. Like, um, we that wasn't was even tough. looking at it like, oh, like on some like super, on shit. some pervert yeah. time. We was just like, we dancing. That's that like how the, we dance. That was the motion. Just like how some people got in. However, people dance, right? Yeah. That's how we was dancing. Well, I'm a um. We gonna set. We're gonna get in our feels real quick before we. We set another to, scene. Yeah, we set another <laughs> scene. So get ready. Remember, palms up to the sky, melting into the sea. Breathing in, breathing out, real slow. All right, so in this scene, you might have woke up and did your morning meditation, had your orange juice or whatever juice or whatever you like to consume in the morning. It's really sunny out, and you're looking outside your sliding glass door to your beautiful black backyard with your terrace and shit. You walk outside, and you're in your workout attire, right? Your athleisure. You walk outside, you set your water down, and then you start to do some push-ups. You start to do some pull-ups or whatever it really pulls that adrenaline out of you from a strength training perspective. What song are you listening to as you push up or pull out? Ooh, let me get. <laughs> I, 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 
My bad. <laughs> what song are you listening to as you push up or down? <laughs> Yo, I'm f***ing up, man. I'm sorry. You might gotta redo it. We gotta redo it, damn. <laughs> All right, we're gonna reset the scene. Push up and pull out. <laughs> Dog, something wrong with me. That's a blooper. All right, no, no. Run it back, run it back, run it back. All right. All right, Spence, I'm about to set a scene, okay? This is morning vibes, maybe Saturday or Sunday, depending on what day you really like to get into a full wellness, you know, uh, revival. And uh, you have your orange juice, you set it down in the kitchen, you're looking outside your patio doors, you see your terrace, you got your little wet, not wet bands, but your, your balls or whatever you, dumbbells, whatever you used to work out sitting out there. You walk out there and you get to it, you deep breath, and then you get down and you start doing some push-ups. What are you listening to as soon as you get down on the ground and start getting to work? Um, Love is Divine by Sizzler. Interesting. Tell me about that song. I never heard it before. Love is Divine by mm -mm. Sizzler. Mm -mm. It's a classic. Yeah, I'm going to pull it up right now. Never but. heard it before. It's fire. It's a reggae. I was about dance to say it's a reggae. Dance. Okay, working out to reggae and dance hall. Interesting. Yeah, I don't listen. I don't really listen to like. I either listen to Afrobeats or dance hall or like. I listen to everything. You listen to I'm a piano? Not really. You should get into that. You're gonna club, like it. But I do mess with it though. Okay. I just I need, I need to be put on the artist. Damn, my service ain't working. It's slowing. But anyway, it's 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 like a it's like a smooth vibe. I, I listen to smooth when I work out too. Mm -hmm. I'm not like one of those people who gotta listen to like super super up tempo stuff. Okay. Because sometimes, I, I, one of my uh, homies' dad who used to coach us in track. He, t he used to tell me that he said that like before his basketball game, he knew somebody or him or somebody he knew he used to listen to jazz before their basketball games because they wanted to be calm, like calm killer. Ah, uh, spooky, yeah, yeah stealthy. Yeah, just be a killer, yeah, like just yeah, on yeah. some like all the way, just calmed out. So like, cause it was like, yo, sometimes you get too too tired out trying to be too hype. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's about lifting the weight or pulling whatever. It's about that. It's not about like. Yeah. It's not about like being like super, super I excited. Think, I need to think about that when I work out. I, when I work, I, I, for me, I'm I'm a very soft and bubbly person in general. But when I work out, that's when I can be like, like that's when I can yeah. channel that. But it does take a lot out of me just to even channel that. Like if I got to turn something on just to yeah. turn myself on, that's a little bit too much work, you yeah. know. This is personally. Yeah. Like, but um, I, we will get turned too. Like I, yeah. I think I think it's. I think like hype music is is better for me when I'm like running. Okay, yeah, you gotta yeah. keep going. Like having something with a tempo. You run far? Do you run like miles and miles, or just like? A mile? Um, well, I usually sprint. I usually do like two hundreds, four hundreds. Oh, you like, ran? You ran like track? That. Yeah, I ran, I ran track, track too. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I used to high jump and sprint. Okay. And then I did a little bit of mid distance, but recently mm -hmm. I've been conquering my fear of long distance running. And like I've been running five Ks in Miami, like two five Ks a week, and then sometimes I run like I I did like a twelve mile run the other day, and I'm just I've been trying to get 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 um. That's from here to Jersey. Conquer, <laughs> yeah. I've been just trying to conquer myself, cause uh yeah, I don't know that part. I just conquer, myself. conquer my fears and just um Living just keep growing, yeah. But I've definitely been running a lot, and the diet definitely helps with the stamina and um running far and getting my mile time down and my pace down because mm -hmm. i think when i started running again it was like a couple years ago and i was like i was out of it i couldn't break seven well i could but it, I, it was hard seven miles seven minutes seven minutes but now i'm like in the fives oh for, for that's miles. a that's a tr like that's a track it's like, moving yeah it's moving yeah that's moving it's not like how them how them distance boys be running though nah like, i know what in, you mean you know like in the in like at the track meets i'm yeah, not yeah yeah that's, that's painful but if i, I don't uh, like painful running unless i'm sprinting yeah you like, like the runners high try, yeah trying to go like fast fast during yeah. like a long run is just too painful it's not even like it's like annoying pain like, yeah like why am i doing this to myself mm -hmm. I ain't no damn Olympian. On Instead me, of you connecting with yourself, yeah, I'm just it. trying to open up my open up my chakras and stuff like oh, get do myself like get myself open. All right, well, closing that scene. <laughs> um, oh, that was still part of the scene. I mean, no, the working out stuff. No, you're telling the story about what, how I st what I set the scene on. So yeah, we needed that. Thank you. Where are you at? Um. All right, y'all. The last portion of the show was more so about what's next from Spence Lee, right?
Mm-hmm. And I know it's Q1 slash Q2. I'll be a project coming soon. Yeah. Can you tell us about it? Mm-hmm. Album is Album. coming out. Um, executive produced by Mike Will Made It. Mike Will Made It. And, um, <laughs> yeah, got a lot of vibes on there. Um, all different type of vibes, melodies, harmonies, rhythm. Um, the music is just eclectic. God, I'm talking about a lot of things, uh, uh, emotions, um, background stories, like parts of my story that people don't know. Um, definitely some fun vibes too, some turn up vibes. Okay. Um, stuff for the girls, stuff for the fellas, everything. But it's just all like just capturing like the different dynamics and sides of me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As we drink Your this taste and sound. pink room tea. All in one. Pink room tea. I like that. There we go. It's the pink room tea here. Everyone, we going to put that put that on the box. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, so we learned a lot from you today. I'm saying we, like, they also learned. They probably did too. At least I did. Especially because for me, again, connecting with people is learning through learning about their relationship with music and seeing the wide spectrum that you have it makes sense why i feel like you're so enlightened and and confident in your sound and who you are because you already kind of have the the paint on your palette right like it's just about you know you expressing that in what you do with art and in different forms of it um and we have uh your project or album coming Mm. in q2 soon so i'm looking forward to diving deeper into that and really understanding it more now that i've had this connection with you and know more about you and it's gonna be dope it's gonna be yeah. a lot of a lot of new sounds like live instruments really oh, really great production i love a lot of instruments. yeah and i'm like i got co-production on it too yeah like any features you can drop uh slim jimmy from ray Schremer. okay um some more features on there kakuyan who i've always been collaborating with that's my dog since third grade musical genius playing yeah. all the instruments um and then more features maybe we'll mm-hmm. see we gonna talk see. about it well, yeah, right. it's gonna be dope man it's gonna be dope they never heard an asian artist come how i'm coming they never heard this type of music yeah. and they're talking about the stuff i'm talking about and i think it's just like necessary like my perspective is just you know i got a unique perspective yeah you know what i'm saying i am you do. A, i am a just i am an asian man growing up in a heart of jersey like in the yeah. culture like really living and breathing it and um you know representing my people like we just came from overseas in asia like it's like my mission is bigger now Mm. it's not it's like i want to make sure that's clear too like to the world like it's never about just me and looking looking cool and being fresher than you or flyer than you or get more girls and it's never that it's all about like empowering the next generation right and just being being somebody who's just keeping it real keeping it 100 all the time about their story and then inspiring who I can inspire and serving who I can serve in the community and just pushing culture forward, right, with my art. Like, it's about the art and it's about the product. Like, I'm putting quality stuff out there for people to enjoy and be inspired by and take what they want from it and mm-hmm. build their own. You know what I mean? It's never about, like, oh, y'all jocking my style, y'all doing it. Nah, it's like, this is free game. You know what I mean? So I just want everybody to be able to level themselves up Cause that's the main thing for me. Just as I go along this musical journey, creative journey, artistic journey, this life journey, people. Um, the thing that hits me the most is when people tell me like, "Yo, like, your music inspired me to better myself in this way or that way," and that's like the main thing for me. And I yeah, want to just make sure that special. the world know where my head at. Well, not the world, but whoever listening, they know where my head at because, you know, it's bigger than just Spence. It's bigger than that. It's like I'm on a mission. I want to represent for my people, and I want to inspire the next generation. So, and make a positive impact. Tell my story. Tell my side. Tell my perspective. Because if I don't tell it, who gonna tell it for me? You're you're the only you. Yeah. Nobody can do it like you do it. So you gotta do it. Yeah, spreading love to everybody. Shout out to Major Stage. Yeah, shout out to Major shout Stage. Shout out to Dre. Yes, yeah, shout out to Dre. Shout out to Major Stage. Shout out to Spence. Shout out to Spence. Spence Lee. Um, thank you so much for joining me today in the pink room the pink and sitting room. through my scenes and all the other stuff. I'm sure we will connect and down the path. Um, but I want to close out the show by saying that whatever you love about music is what you probably do love about yourself. So find the connection and then you'll figure it out. All right. So when you go in your house, you, 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 you take your shoes off at the door. Oh, absolutely. It's New York. It's disgusting.
And okay, but good job. Um, <laughs> Are you gonna judge me? Yeah. In your own house. I mean, I just like to know. I ain't gonna judge you. Yeah. But uh, okay. So how you how are you with plants? You know how to take care of plants? No, I suck. No. I can take care of flowers if you buy them for me though. I appreciate the honesty. Good mm -hmm. job. All right. Um, top five artists right now. I was gonna say Usher, but okay. Okay, right all now, time, all time, all time. All time Usher. Artists, they don't gotta be Brandy, rappers. Stevie, Michael, Beyonce. I respect it. Usher for real, Usher hard. Shout out to Usher. He 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 made some of the best melodies in the world to me. Him and Stevie. Yeah. Okay. If you had to pick anywhere in the world to live for a year, where would it be? Where would it be besides America? Uh, Ghana. Ghana. Accra. Accra, Ghana. Yeah. West Africa. Mhm. Mm you gotta go. I'm gonna go. Yeah. I got people sure. out there waiting for me. All right. Top three different foods like uh Cuisines. type of food yeah cuisine cajun cajun um i love chinese food i ain't gonna hold you like <laughs> real chinese food and then um creole is still kind of cajun uh mediterranean mediterranean okay mm -hmm. top five favorite fruits Ooh, kiwi watermelon strawberry pineapple and bananas i love fruits you're good, good at this job. Nah, I'm telling you, I'm 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 gonna be in broadcasting one day. I'm dead. <laughs> All right. Would you rather fight a dog-sized lion or a lion-sized dog? Oh, what that just we have, I, Would you rather fight an elephant-sized alligator or an alligator-sized elephant? I ain't trying to fight. I don't fight. You gotta pick I gotta one. Answer, okay, elephant-sized alligator. Huh? An elephant sized alligator. For real? Yeah. What does that look you like? Go for, you know how big an elephant is, right? Oh, you mean an elephant, uh, an actual a alligator ele as big as an elephant? An alligator that's as big as an elephant or an elephant that's as big as an alligator. Oh, the first one. The first one. There we go. So the alligator that's as big as an elephant. No, the second that. one. You're fucking me up. Yes, the second one. No, the little one. The little, okay. The I can kick thing. it. All right. Would you rather fight a dog sized ant or an ant sized dog? Ant sized dog. You killing dogs? Yeah. I kill Crazy. it. If you I gotta get killer. I'll you're kill a, if I got animal to. Animal cruelty. You're a dog yeah. killer. My bad. I'm telling Peter. Alright. Um, what's your favorite color? Pink. What's your sign? Cancer. Do you believe that it means something? Um, I don't know yet. I don't know. I think it kinda do, but Yeah. I'm I'm a I've I'm a very dynamic individual. I surprise myself all the time. I don't know where this is coming from. What's the first thing, what's the first three things that you notice on a guy when you first meet them? His teeth, his smell, and his shoes. Word. Fellas, pay attention. Mm hmm Your teeth, your smell, and your shoes. Nah, that's, that's not for real. That's it. That's dope. That's dope. Gotta smell good. That's your aura. That and your confidence, too. But that's not physical. That's not physical. You're good at this. That was fun.